Hello. So something super cool is going on with Amazon Lumberyard lately. They've dropped a VR sample project, which has three levels that have really cool features. So this video, I just kind of want to go through and check them out and see all the cool new stuff they have. So to get this project, all you have to do is obviously have Lumberyard, which you can download from their website. And now right below the download for the engine is the download for the VR sample project. All you have to do is download this, extract it, and put the files in the right spot. Well, that's not entirely true because to make the video playback, you have to enable one of the gems. But don't worry, it's not too hard. So open up this project. It doesn't matter where you extract it because we just have to move the files manually anyway. And we're going to put them in the devs folder. So whenever you install, probably on your local C drive, you have Amazon, Lumberyard, 1.7.0.0 dev and that's where all of lumberyard files like to live so in your extracted folder you have a few things in here and that basically tells you where to put it so in the bin 64 vc 120 you're going to put the virtual reality launcher and the virtual reality dll in the code folder you're going to put the virtual reality project and then in the dev folder itself you're going to put the other virtual reality project folder and that is literally all it takes to have that project installed. So if you go up here in the project configurator, you can see it's in there. All you have to do is set this as default. So now when you open up the editor or try to run the launcher, it'll run the right thing. There's one other thing to do here though. If you go down to enable gems, go down here, enable the video playback gem and click save. Now this requires a rebuild of your project and this particular rebuild actually requires you to have some optional DLLs in there. So in the setup assistant thing, you're going to have these required SDKs, but you also have optional SDKs and two of them down here are the FFmpeg and the libav. You need one of those or else the video playback is not going to work for you. It was quite a bit of file wrangling to get it to work on my computer. I not sure if this will work for everyone but basically what i had to do is in the install software pane go to the get it field i had to install the shared and the dev version of ffmpeg put the same files together put those files in its own file and make sure everything's in the right spot so down to third party i had to make a folder called ffmpeg make a folder called 3.2, and then I had to put the contents of both the shared and the dev download in order to make it work. But eventually I got it working, so I'll be able to showcase that, which is pretty sweet. So we don't need that anymore, don't need that anymore. But now that we have it enabled, if we open up the editor, it will open us up to the sample project, and then we can load the launcher after that. So you're gonna find the launcher where we put it in the bin VC120. It needs to be there or else it won't work because it needs to find all these other files. Also the Oculus, or whatever headset you have thing might open up by itself and you might hear some fireplace crackling in the background that's just the oculus home screen all that's pretty cool we don't really need that anymore let's just get right into the project itself so what's really cool is that the oculus rift will actually open up the project in the oculus headset itself so i'm currently wearing the oculus rift and now I have the Oculus Touch controller, and it opens up to the box garden scene. So you have, in this hand, it makes big boxes. In this hand, it makes little boxes that move a lot faster. But every time you shoot a box, it gives you a little bit of feedback. So the big box has bigger, louder feedback, and this little box has just a little tiny bump. But you can just... That's far from the only level, so to get into the other levels, just make sure that you have the sample project in focus, and you can open up the tilde key and open up another map by going map vr underscore tv room underscore sample. So this scene is a sample of the video playback feature, so 
when you push this button, it will play the video on that screen. And it will play them over there. And now if you push the trigger again, it will play a 360 movie. So it puts it all around you, which is really cool as well. And it can just cycle through that. And if you look on the blog when they talk about this feature, you can actually place these on spheres, or you can put them on like a million TV screens at once, or you can make one video separated onto different screens. So there's a lot of cool stuff with the video things. And the other scene is... VR xylophone sample. And this one's really cool because it's similar to the box garden scene that you shoot things out, but in this scene, when you shoot these, it makes music notes. Now what's cool about all these sample scenes is that it's not just what's in front of you, so if I turn around, there's a statics violin xylophone to play music with. And turn all the way around. It's really cool with the headset. Unfortunately, in this video, you don't actually hear that well about the 3D sounds, but it actually, the sound comes from where you're standing, and it comes from where the sound comes from. It's really super cool. So those are the three sample levels. So in the next bit, we're going to open up the editor and just kind of poke around a little bit. So each of the scenes are done with a kind of a mixture of flow graph and Lua. So I'm going to mostly be looking at some of the flow graph stuff because a lot of the Lua stuff is just setting up VR inputs and stuff like that. So I'm going to start with the box garden sample. There's nothing in the scene really, but if you push G, it spawns all of them. So if you look at these piles of box spawners, it's all done through this little flow graph. So it's you can see the loop here, and it's looping till 50. So you push G, you can see that in the background, but if you want to change the number, you can just make that like 10, and then it doesn't make a very big tower, or you can make it 150, and do that, and it spawns so many boxes that they don't even render because they're so far away, so that's kind of awesome. And you can always just grab the spawner, duplicate it. Duplicate it where you can actually see it. You can see there's a whole bunch more. So that's pretty cool to look around and see how that spawns. The other thing of note is the flow graph for the input events. So here the flow graph is just an action handler. Left trigger shoots a large box, and you can see that it gives it an audio, a little bit of physics, and then a force feedback. So the force feedback is cool because you can actually make a list of them and then do what you want. So this one is set to left shift. You can do strong or weak or whatever, or make that the right one. You can see down here the right trigger shoots a small box. The small box has a much bigger physics impulse, but it has a different thing. And I would love to demonstrate the differences between the force feedbacks, but this is a video, so no one's going to be able to feel it except for me. So let's go on to a different scene. We'll just go to the xylophone scene just for a little bit. This one's not quite as interesting, at least to look at in the flow graph, because it mostly has the same input. 
it's just relying on spawning a different archetype and playing a different bit of music. But it's kind of interesting to see that they actually set this one up manually rather than spawning them, which you could certainly do if you wanted to. And the last scene is the TV room scene. Now, the TV room scene is really cool because all this functionality, you kind of have to dig around a little bit to see what's going on. But if you open up one of the flow graphs, you can see that it's actually spawning an archetype. So if you look at that archetype in the roll-up bar, you can see that there's actually a whole bunch of stuff that they have set up that you can just basically drag into the scene. So one of the coolest functionalities, you can actually display your videos on spheres. So if I push control G, it's actually playing that video on a sphere instead of on a square. And there's even kind of a challenge if you read the official press release, you see how good the performance is if you play more than one TV screen. So I'm going to just do as many TV screens as I can do before it starts getting boring. So you can see it like actually barely affects the performance at all, so it all runs really well. It's really cool to play the sample project, so I definitely recommend if you have a VR headset downloading it and trying it out. And it's pretty cool to see all this stuff, so good hunting making cool VR games. Thanks for watching.